We're now going to look at the paediatric first aid kit. Now there are guidelines laid down on exactly what a nursery or childcare setting should have in their first aid kit, and this type of kit meets those requirements. To start with, this one's in a plastic case, but you can have them in soft pouches as well. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the actual physical case is. Now this one's a case you can just leave somewhere, or it's got a wall bracket built into the back of it, so you can come to the screws and fix onto the wall. Uh, others have a little hook that goes on the top, that hooks up at the top here but they're pretty much all the same. They usually on the back have some kind of instructions to what's actually in the unit. So it's quite important to look at that because you can double check exactly what should be in the kit and make sure that there's nothing missing. Um, now this is just one brand. I so say there's lots of different brands um, and we sell, I think, about three different types of brands of these kits, plus personalized kits as well. So if you want your nursery details on the front, we do those as well. So the first thing you come across is the uh, first aid guide. Now these will be different on different kits, but they all have basically the same information in them. This is just a quick guide to first aid. So hopefully with training, you won't need to refer to it, but if you do, then there's some information there. What I do now is just look through the components in here. Now, again, this is one brand, the one type of packaging. So different kits will have slightly different packaging. Uh, it might be paper or it might be plastic or there's lots of things like that, but the basic components are gonna be very, very similar. To start with, we've got standard dressings. Uh, these are what they call the HSE dressings. We have the medium and the large. And uh, these dressings are the types of dressings we show on the courses where you've got the gauze pads sewn into the bandage. So when you're checking first aid kits, um, you need to look at the kit and also there'll be an expiry date on there as well. So you need to make sure that everything in the kit is in date. Now, if you have something that's not in date, you can still use it. It's just the, the maximum date is the date where the manufacturer will guarantee that there's no problem with the packaging and the product inside will stay sterile. So yes, you need to, if they're expired, you must get them changed. But if you had to use something, you can do. So that, um, uh, dates will go against anything that's sterile in the kit. Um, other, so there's, in the kit itself, it's got a few different types of dressings. So we've got some large ones and some small ones in there as well. Um, we also have some micropore tape. Uh, this is quite a narrow one. Other kits have a slightly wider micropore tape. So this can be for securing uh, bandages in place. Uh, there's lots of different uses you can use with that that we'll talk about in the courses. Um, there's some plasters. These ones here are particularly ch child plaster, but any plaster will do. Uh, and there's a pack of plasters in there. You can just open it up and all the plasters are inside. Uh, there's a uh, finger bandage. This is uh, a, a finger applicator. Uh, so you've got a tubular gauze inside. So you can put a gauze pad on a finger. You can push this over the outside of the applicator, put it on, take it off, twist it half a turn and put it back on again. And that's an easy way of applying uh, a finger bandage uh, to a child or an adult. There's also a CPR shield. Again, these come in various shapes depending on the kit. And either they're going to have a little plastic valve on them or they'll have a clear paper. But they both work in exactly the same way. It's just for doing breaths when doing CPR. Um, in these pads here are some just some dressing pads. So what you can do with these is have, uh, if it's a cut to a finger, you can apply the, the pad over the finger and then you could use this uh, tubular gauze to hold it in place. Uh, and then you could always then secure it with um, the micropore tape. Or you can just put this pad over a wound and just secure it with the micropore tape, tape straight on. It's another alternative to putting a plaster on. There's iPads. Now these are flat packed ones, but other iPads you get are rolled up very similar to this type of dressing. Um, and uh, they're just a simple pad with a bandage to hold the bandage over the eyes should anything happen to the eyes. There's some cleaning wipes, uh, and these are for just cleaning off the surface. Um, so it's just a wet wipe, foil wrapped. So you just tear it, take the wipe out, uh, and then you can clean up uh, the, the site. There's then some gloves. Um, these are nitrile gloves, uh, but um, sometimes these kits do have a, um, a vinyl glove in them. But uh, the nitrile gloves are there. Typically, a lot of these are often done as a large size glove because if you're having a first aid kit, a large size glove will fit on most people's hands. But if you put a medium sized glove in there, if you've got big hands, it's just not gonna fit. So a larger will always fit something smaller, but a small won't fit anything larger. So it's always worth having the larger size gloves. Uh, there's also some swabs, um, and then we've got triangular bandages. And uh, these triangular bandages in, in paper wrap, but you get these also in uh, plastic wrap as well. Um, typically these aren't uh, um, sterile, uh, but um, sometimes you do have them that are, but uh, like this one, but um, other times they're not, they're just in an open packet. But if you're doing, having something like a, a standard triangular bandage, there's not really a need to have it um, touching directly onto the wound. Uh, but as I say, these ones are a, 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 a sterile version. So we've got quite a few of those, because you can use these for padding, because these are sterile as well. 
You can use them for padding around a wound um, and lots of other applications. And if you had to put an arm in a sling and then also tie around to secure for a shoulder problem, then you've got enough uh, items there. Another thing here is just uh, some scissors. Uh, these are standard scissors, that are reasonably blunt-ended, but others have a very blunt or, or they have a, a more of a shear type action to them. So yeah, they're very uh, easy to cut clothing things, but the basic scissors are in there. Um, and also a little packet of safety pins. Um, these are limited use now within first aid, but if you're doing triangular bandages, some people refer to secure the triangular bandage with a safety pin, or there's other uses you can use with those. And final little thing inside this particular box um, are the screws to fit it to the wall, uh, but other kits would have an angle bracket and screws inside the kit. So it's worth when you get your new kit, find out how it's gonna be fixed to the wall so that you can uh, check uh, what equipment's there, get it mounted up where everybody can see it. So just to recap, make sure you've got the items you need. If there's any special risks or high risks you need to do where you're working, you need extra bits and pieces, uh, make sure you've got enough first aid kits, uh, maybe even have one on every floor if that's the case. And also go through the first aid kit, keep records of uh, all the, the dates of when stuff's needed and go through it routinely and make sure that everything is in date and ready to use.